Yo, 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 what's good, Knicks Nation? This is your boy, Young Jedi Fresh, and this is Knicks Fan TV, the podcast, episode four. As usual, I'm joined by my esteemed colleague, C. Black. What's good, homie? Knicks Nation, what's happening? Fresh off a of vacation, fresh off a of hiatus, but glad to be back. Glad to be back yes, talking sir. Knicks. Let's get into it. I mean, the Knicks, staying in the headlines as usual. Um, before we bring up the usual noise that the Knicks bring out on a daily basis, let's talk about the recent signing of Ramon Sessions a few days ago by Mr. Scott Perry, his first free agent signing since his hiring. W- what do you uh, What are your thoughts on this trade, Black? Hey, uh, we could have Ramon Sessions to the list of players that we should have had about five, six, seven years ago, uh, but um, struck out on and, and getting them again uh, fresh off of injury. So he should fit right into the garden. Welcome back to the welcome to the Knicks. Finally, uh, Ramon Sessions, the future big three star. The, the, the future big three star. Man. <laughs> if you take I mean, a look at the big three lineups. Um, you could probably pick two to three Knicks on each team, as in yeah. old and washed. Old and washed. I mean, you know, in his favor, he's 31, but he is coming off that the meniscus tear. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a bit indifferent on this signing. I, I think that, um, you know, he, he's, just, he's, he's still a combo guard, only four assists per game uh, as his career average. Um, you know, you have her, you already have Ron Baker, who's a combo guard, trying to learn to play the point guard, uh, demanding position in this league. And you could even argue that Frank Nielakina starting off is going to be more of a combo guard until he really learns to, to be a, you know, learn what it takes to be a floor general in this league. So, so I'm a, I'm a bit indifferent. I'm a, I'm a bit indifferent on the, on this deal. What, what do you think? I disagree on a combo bar. Com- I disagree on a combo guard statement. I feel that you're absolutely right. I mean, I, I'm not going to disagree that he is a com- he's a tweener. He, I think he's been labeled a tweener for most of his career. Um, but I, I kind of, if if in in ter- I kind of lean for him being a, towards being more of a point guard than a shooting guard, in my opinion, because I think a lot of the tweeners that we've had, if we take a look at J- Jamal Crawford's or Nate Robinsons of the world that have came through the Knicks, they've always been um, those uh, guards or tweeners rather that kind of leaned a little bit more toward the wing shoot position. first yeah. shoot first guys exactly yeah. three point shooter specialist um drive to the basket type of guys but with remote sessions i mean if you take a look at his numbers um at career average obviously a four that that's the glaring but his rookie season he came into milwaukee he only albeit he only played 17 games he was dropping eight times per game um and that was his highest of his career and then you know, it, it kind of went up and down. Six, six, six assists the next season. Kind of went down to three the following, and then back to five. I mean, when he was with, um, he's never really stayed on one team for too long. That's that's another thing with Ramon Sessions, and, and I feel like he's kind of a, a a flower that's waiting to bloom. In my opinion, I'm not saying that Ramon Sessions is going to come out here start averaging. Yeah, but I mean, 10. look at look at a guy like your Jamal Crawford. You know, look how many teams JC's been on. Yeah, you know, I think some guys, and Ramon Session to me is one of those guys where, you know, yeah, they're talented, yeah, this, that, and the third, and, and they'll do their job, but they're, you know, they're expendable guys, and, and I think, you know, he's but he's Jim, one of those guys. Jamal Crawford's not an expendable guy. Jamal Crawford's a well, guy. Well, look, look how many teams he's been on. Of course he's an expendable how many teams guy. How he been on? Uh, Jamal Crawford? Let's see. He's, he's what, he started the with the Bulls. The Knicks. Right? The Warriors. The Warriors. The Hawks. The Hawks twice. Well, the cli- he, he the, just caught the, the board out, the buyout. He's the been Clippers. on the Clippers. Um, he's been on the and Bulls. On Minnesota. We said that. Six the, teams. Right. The Bulls, the Knicks. Six teams. The Golden State. Yeah, he's been on six teams. Ramon Sessions has been on, what, six or seven? He's been on um, a few teams, but he's only stayed on them. Um, he's not been with one team for more than three seasons. In his right. whole career, right. So you so you have to wonder why doesn't he have staying power? Well, I, I just think you got to take a look at a situation. He's always come into a situation where he's been regulated as the backup. There's always been a de facto starter wherever he's went. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you, you know that that's certainly fair. Um, but I mean, you know, I'm I not say saying that he's a say, world beater. I'm, I'm not. I'm, hey, yeah. I'm, don't I'm just, he, yeah. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not saying he, he's 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 a scrub. Um, but I, I just say that to say, um, you know, 
for for a one year two point three million dollar flyer, it, it's not a bad deal. But I, I thought Ronda was a better risk, albeit a mental risk. Uh, I thought Ronda was a better risk from from a floor general standpoint, a guy that can really get out there and distribute um, eight assists per game career. It, it, you know, somebody that's really a pass first um, point guard. But you know what? I, I think you know obviously Ramon Sessions can fill it up. Uh, he came highly touted. You heard Dan D'Antoni give rave reviews on him, and um, you know his pick and roll abilities and ability to spread the floor. So um, you know, let's, let's stay optimistic about it. Well, I, I take a look at it this way: um, for every time Ramon Session has played the Knicks, he's always played very well in, in every game I remember seeing him. Yeah, he's destroyed. Mm-hmm. We just always been the case. Um, Donnie Walsh a few years ago was aiming for him, tried to get him into New York for a four-year, $24 million deal, and he opted to go somewhere else. And, and then I believe, what, he was probably 25, 26 in his prime at the time, or rather, you know, just getting into it. Uh, I, like I said, I think in an ideal situation, Ramon Sessions is a breakout player. And going back to Jamal Crawford, you have to think, he stayed in the Bulls for three seasons, he was with the Knicks for about three seasons. He, he did move around. But until he ended in the Clippers, where he won two Six Men of the Year awards, is where really he found his niche. And I think with a player like Romo Sessions... Three times Six Men. Yeah, you, I mean, you get him in a situation where he knows more than likely he's going to be the starter for the first time in his career at 31 years old. He knows that he's got the opportunity to really make an impact on a team that has been fairly mediocre, sub-mediocre, if you really want to be granular about it he has the opportunity to um be an impact player on his team in addition to being that vet presence and leadership and as you alluded to the guy plays the pick and roll extremely well and seeing him with kp uh and jeff hornacek's revamp offense as i hope we're going to see next season which i'm pretty sure of i think it's a good fit and i think it's really an opportunity for remote sessions to go out there and give us you know 12 and 6 which are my realistic expectations for him He's not going to come out and give us twenty and ten, and I'm not, and, and nobody uh, in the Knicks, who, no, no he, fan of the Knicks should be expecting that. But, but let, also at the same time, I mean, he really here was brought to to um, bring up Frank Milikina as that that presence. Uh, yeah, absolutely, and and that should be one of his jobs. But I think another job that that I think we're overlooking here is that. Uh, we need a floor general to get KP started to, to really show us and really unleash KP. We haven't had that yet as he's been here. Uh, we we need that guy. We, we need that guy that's going to come in and get KP started off on the right foot, especially if Melo leaves. You know, this team is going to struggle. We need a guy that's going to come in and set up KP with easy mid-range shots, not, you know, a guy that's going to give them to him at the top of the key from 25 feet out and shoot those KP three-pointers that make you cringe. Um, you know, we, I, we needed that, that floor general that's, that's finally going to help, help him settle in and, and establish his mid-range game or in the pick-and-roll effectively. And I think this is what Sessions brings to us. Uh, again, I'm not going to say the guy's a world beater, but he is a point guard who likes to pull. Yeah, but at four, at four assists per game, I, I mean, the, the numbers don't really tell the, the, the whole picture, I guess. Yeah, but we're taking a look at a sample side where he's at, what, played 25 to 28 minutes max on any given team. He's going to go into next season going to be playing 35 minutes a game, for sure, If especially if 18-year-old Frank Nilekina or Ron Baker – can't pick up any slack. I mean, I'm expecting not to not see that many minutes, but for the most part, especially to start the season, I do see him getting 30 minutes a game, especially in this offense that is really tailor-made for a point guard. Jeff Hornacek has a lot of options right now at the point guard positions. He can deploy Ron and Ramon to play off each other in the wing in different situations. He can have Chase on off at the wing. He can have Frank at, at, at the point guard and uh, Ramon at the wing. So there's it's going to be very interesting to see how Hornacek use these, these point guards because when he was in Phoenix, he really took advantage of Brandon Knight and, 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 and Bledsoe, Eric Bledsoe rather, uh, to the maximum capacity, and they played extremely well. All I'm saying is that I, I'm being the cynic in terms of let's – Get, let's get Ramon into this situation, and let's see what he can do. Sure, it's hard to dis, dis to to dis, um, disregard their numbers. He's you're absolutely right. He's a career four assist type of guy, but also at the same time, he's got flashes. Like I said, he came into the league averaging eight assists as a rookie. I think that 
And I'm just being that hopeful Nick fan that hopes that, hey, let's give me 12 and 7 next year and I'll be really happy. Yeah, uh, I mean, as you said, you, you know, it should be interesting to see what Hornacek does with his uh, newfound freedom. <laughs> how I, how funny that is, you know, a second-year coach that, you know, is finally getting his chance to actually be the coach of the team. Um, so, so let's see what see what the camp battles and and the camp uh, lineups um, establish over time. Absolutely, I, I like the Ramon session signing. I mean, at the end of the day, let's be real. He's really to come here to be that steady guiding hand at the point guard position as we kind of develop your boys like Ron Baker, Chase on Randall, and of course, recent draft pick, Frank Nilekina. Um, I, I have semi-mediocre expectations for this team going into next season, despite Melo being, not being here, um, which looks like to be the case. I think where you see a much improved KP, I think we see a much improved flowing offense, and I think chemistry is going to be a hundred times better than it was last year, especially with the new players coming in and really not having that cloud of the triangle over their head. Yeah, you're right. They should be able to do more with the freedom. Um, but again, you know, I, I'm not expecting much from this team. I'd like to see KP develop. I'd like to see what this rookie Frank Nielakina can do. I'd like to see Tim Hardaway earn his contract. And um, I, uh, I'd like to see, you know, Willie Hearn and Gomez and, and uh, Cheese Kuzmingis take additional steps in, in their progression. And, and that's it, man. That, that's all I'm really looking at, man. I, I just want to see what type of um, progression these young guys take and, and develop over the season and, and see how battle-tested they'll, they'll become. My early prediction is that Kuz has a breakout season next year. That I boy, Cheese. Gets- oh, Cheese. I'm Jeez, depending man. on you, Cheese. I see you. You haven't really been mentioned too much in the summer. You're on the team next year. I see you getting a lot of minutes if your defense is improved especially, but you're a deadly shooter. I like his action off the ball. I think he picks up. I think he's going to be the most improved player of the team next year, um, and hopefully um, he, he becomes that. Yeah, shout out to Cheese, man. Definitely Cheese. a fan favorite. He One just of my got married. On the team. Congratulations. Just got married, so been um, shout, out, shout out to Cheese on that one. For sure. So, um, before we cut out, we'll just bring a couple tidbits going on in Knicks Nation. Um, before we uh, get into the obvious elephant in the room, the Kyrie Irving trade, which we kind of spoke about on a couple podcasts ago, h- how do you feel about it right now? I'm, I've, I've, To be honest, I've kind of cooled off. If we get them, we get them. If we don't, we don't. And I'm not really trying to give up two draft picks to get them. Listen, as I've said, I'm, I feel cool about doing absolutely nothing. I don't want a repeat of the mellow trade where you're giving up pieces to go nowhere but south. Wait until 2019. If he's that desperate to be a Nick, he can wait, and we can wait for him. There's no point in giving up any assets to bring him in here and not win. The point is yeah. to win. You, 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 you give up. Danny Ainge has showed you time and time again. You give up your your primary assets when you're ready to hit that corner and begin legitimately competing for a championship. Until you're ready to do that, you're only just getting fleeced in a deal. So just wait for them. I'm I'm good with it. I, and my thinking now is not more so. Let's let's bring them in and we're losing assets or draft picks, where the case might be. Let's develop some players. I don't yeah, think well, I, let, players let's develop some players as well. I, I completely let's just develop agree. Some players. I mean. What what are we doing here? We, as soon as we get glimpses of certain players, they're they're gone. We don't have we don't see what they really can do. Um, I, I'm really f- more so like I think this roster is decent as it is. I think we still need some pieces, but I think let's see what the young guys can do while we have the time to kind of attract people to come here and and give people the hope that not only the fans but free agent prospects in the future that you know coming to New York maybe not that bad of bad of a deal. Let's just build and stop looking for the flashy things and the oohs and ahs at the, at the Garden. Because at the end of the day, if he comes here and they continue to lose and continue to have losing seasons, what are you going to hear? Oh, this management is terrible. This management, they always do this. So just sit back and wait. If he's here in 2019, he's here. If not, move forward. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sweating it um, anymore. Um, next on the docket is I know it's can't beat a dead horse enough, but 
Uh, Carmelo Anthony kind of resurfaced into the public eye yesterday. What was that today? That was today. That was today, um, Wednesday, the 2nd of August. Uh, he received a medal from the city of Baltimore uh, for his contributions through over the years. So uh, shout out to Melo on that. Um, you know, controversies aside, he's always been a stand-up citizen. Stop snitching oh, until, aside. Yeah, until that. <laughs> until, until, until the video where he told the people to submit. Yeah. It's a new man. It's a new man. You gotta, he, you're right. He's a young boy then. You know, but, um, you know, uh, with the, with the melodrama, it's just in a, in a holding pattern. It's what it's been for a few weeks. Um, you, you know, the, I think, I guess the revelation, which may or may not have been a revelation, was that uh, he wouldn't accept a deal to Cleveland and, you know, he simply wants to go to Houston, which means that he knows, as well as everybody else knows, that LeBron is as good as gone from there at the end of the season. So there's no reason for him to even go to Cleveland. But on the flip side, there's probably no interest in Cleveland for even trading for him at this point if they know LeBron's situation as well. So, you know, Cleveland may not have really been a realistic option uh, for Melo to go to. You know, I'm still going to kind of let those rumors go. I think Melo's always been a diplomatic guy, and I'm not going to believe anything until he actually says it. I mean, during during that... that um, the medal ceremony or he I was also there for the basketball the the basketball tournament but um other than that you know I always get the sense of the feeling that he's he's like I, you know let let the media talk um he's never really come out and said what, what he what we're hearing so I mean I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the same thing I, I don't think he wants to go to Cleveland because he knows LeBron is gone and he'd rather go to Houston because maybe the idea is LeBron signs with with um with Houston next year somehow but it, it's a it's a complicated situation. My only thing is that I, I don't want it to be a distraction. This, that's the last thing this team really needs going into next season. To be completely honest with you, especially with Frank Nelikina and you know um, the the movement to be young and develop our players, it's just not something we want to have hanging over the garden as we start next season. So I really want it rectified as sooner than later. But again, I just haven't heard anything from Carmelo. That indicates that he wouldn't be open to being here another season, and also not he's like I said, it's, I guess it's in God's hands, as they say. I think he's he's done, man. It, there's only so much a, a grown ass man can take. Uh, you know, think about sitting at work and, and your boss has just been shitting on you for the past two, three years about how, how terrible you are. You know, at some point you're gonna want to flee the coop. You, you know, I, I just oh, no, think I don't it, disagree. Yeah, I just think it's time. I don't see there's any way he turns back on this. He gave them the the he, you know he waived his no trade clause after after being reluctant to do so and uprooting his family and leaving New York. Remember, he wanted New York, and you know they continued to shit on him, and and now he's he's ready to go. So now this thing with Houston becomes more of a more of a blinking match, more of a game of chicken to see who moves first because it seems like it's Houston or bust. So now it's like, do where's the leverage that we had in the beginning? You, you know, doesn't really seem like we have much. So don't be if you see if you see, don't be surprised if you see Ryan Anderson's ass skipping over, to, <laughs> skipping it down I, I, with his bloated contract at training camp. I, I uh, no, I, I can't see that. In all honesty, if Melo is demanding to be traded to Houston, I'm saying, listen. I'm sorry, but we can't do that because unless Houston comes up with something resembling a good deal for you, we're not going to make that trade. I think that's a good. I think that's a good stance. Let him open up that no trade clause if really if that's really the case that he's narrowing it down to Houston. Let him open up his options because it really puts us in a bind. And if we put Ryan Anderson here at that length of a deal and that much money, like what's the point? Because he's he's a three point specialist. That's all he does. He's not a dynamic scorer in any fashion. He plays no defense, and we're gonna be here for three seasons. Like I I don't see that happening unless they trade Ryan Anderson somewhere else and get some tangible assets in return that they can trade to us. I think that Houston deal should be mute, muted immediately, and he should honestly look because Melo's he's isn't next year the team op, uh, player option for him. Um, I would have to look that up. Uh, yeah, I think I think he has a player option, but regardless of the fact, 
Um, I think that we hope we have to. We're not taking Ryan Anderson. Fuck that shit. I, I'm not Ryan Anderson. <laughs> I'm not taking Ryan Anderson for Carmelo Anthony. We gave up two first round draft picks and five qualified NBA players to obtain him. And just because we gave him, and it's not, we didn't even give Phil Jackson, the guy that shitted on you all season, gave you the no trade clause. Obviously, we've realized that he was out of his mind for doing that. And maybe just, it, just, it, he's been out of his mind since he came here. So, uh, complicated situation as it is, I think we need to stand pat on sending him where he wants and saying, hey, man, you got to work with us here. Yeah. As the world turns, featuring the Knicks, man, stay tuned. We'll see what happens. Well, that's it for me on my side. You got anything else to bring up for these uh, lovely fans of ours? Stay hopeful, stay faithful, and pray. (laughs) Pray. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Knicks Nation. Once again, this is Knicks Fan TV, the podcast episode four. These are your hosts, Young Jedi Fresh, and my team colleague, C. Black. Next Nation, have a good one. Until next time, peace. Peace.